Hi, I'm Mauro DiGioia, president of ReadGeek Incorporated and developer of the new ReadGeek Universal tool. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a little bit more about flattening and how to use the tool, but most importantly, I'm going to address what I do and different aspects of how you can actually use it to profile and shape the top of the read. Um, the main objective with ReadGeek, a lot of people have said, what the heck is ReadGeek? Basically, it's an all-in-one read adjusting and read maintenance tool. A tool that you don't have to sharpen, that you can put in your pocket, you can pull out at any time and make adjustments to both single and double reads. Okay, I've got my case. This is how you receive your read geek. You can drop it, you can shake it, the cap is not going to come off. But to take it off, once again, you twist and pull at the same time. I open it up, it's got a nice little velveteen bag. Um, jewelry style bag that kind of holds your Read Geek and you pull out and voila you have one shiny new Read Geek. You have your scraper radius, your rail bevels, and of course all sides of this Read Geek are true and are created equal, meaning you can use them for all sorts of balancing, scraping as you would a knife, sandpaper, rush. Okay, I'm just going to open here a box of reads. But anyways, as you can see, brand new read. So this is my process. This is going to be my quick cut process. I would take the read out. Um, again, the first thing I would do is look at the back of the read. I don't know if you can see this, but it's actually warped right here. It's actually over the years it sat in the box. It's raised up. So I am just putting the read geek right here, just laying the weight of the tool. And you can actually see where it's starting to cut and level this read. Um, people ask me about should you put it on a plaque to do this, to make these adjustments. Yes, you can if you would like, but I really teach and I really advocate learning to balance between your hands. Your two hands are some of the best fixtures that God has given us. You have feel, you have touch, you have balance, and it's amazing the tolerances that we can get with the human hand. So again, I form my own fixture, a fixture here holding the read, whichever way you want to hold it, and a fixture here with your read geek. Okay, meaning that I balance, and I'm creating my own little fixture. Okay, Good. and I, you can't really see this in the video, but I can actually feel how it's biasing and how it's cutting here. It's actually quite uh, bowed here in the middle. So I would actually come in here, if this was me once again, and I'm actually, you can see this cane coming off, I'm gonna flatten this out before it even sees water. And it looks like I'm moving a lot, but actually the Re Geek is so precise and removes such small amounts because of how finely it's machined. The amounts that you're moving, it's it's so fine, it's almost like dust. But you're actually doing the job, you're not gouging, you're actually cleaning up now what has happened with the fibers breathing and expanding over time. Okay, boom. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the balance of my read here from left to right. Basically, if I draw real quickly, I do something like this in my reads. I want to see if I, can, if I can draw this without getting too sloppy here. You know, something into here. I want to get kind of a roundness of the heart and bring out in here. I do find, for me anyways, that I want to remove cane right in here. Again, this is that shape of your heart. This is not too uh, pretty right here, but you get the aspect of what I'm trying to say here. Um, so first, I'm looking for balance from left to right. It's a little heavy right here. I'm going to take my real adjuster, put it at the point of adjustment, tilting it 20, 30 degrees, and again, I'm just riding it up. I'm actually holding and I'm actually moving my left hand as I'm planing up. You can see I'm moving just a little bit of cane. I'm making just a very small adjustment there. Um, if I hold it up to light and I feel that it's a little denser anywhere I want to move some cane, I might just come right in here. I can very quickly just move that way. I can also use my pencil eraser, my scraper radius, to get in here. I might profile a little bit. If I find that one corner, see this corner right here is a little heavier, I can take very finely here, again, creating a fixture in my hand. Let's see which way I want to do this as I'm talking. And I would just come off and just kiss that corner off. Again, I might come in here and just try to move a little cane in from the corners 
I can approach it this way. If, if I'm a knife worker, I could come in here. And you can see I'm just, boom. I can move whatever I want. If I do want to get more into here, see if we can get down to camera. You can see just planing that reed. I'm just letting the reed geek touch this cane on edge. And you can see what I'm removing here. Okay, so again, I check my flatness. Yeah, this is much better going all the way off the edge, making sure I'm blending, because that's doesn't seem water here. So if there's any ridges right in here from the factory, sometimes you have almost like a little neural, this re geek is just going to go right over and then just kiss that off. So then I'm going to go ahead and put that into water um, for a little bit to play or maybe just lick it and play it and see what it's going to do. But um, as I have said in a prior video, by already doing this before it sees water, I find that it starts sealing the pores. And so as it starts soaking in the water, it's going to have a propensity not to warp as much as it would when everything is open. And if it's already warping a certain way, the minute it sees water, it's going to go ahead and exasperate that situation there. Okay, here is a, um, a soprano reed that was left in water for several hours now for people who like to soak their reeds. Um, what has happened here with this reed, and this is, happens to a lot of people that keep their reeds in a moist environment or try to keep them wet, um, is that it will start to con, con, uh, cave warp, meaning that the sides will start to roll out this way. So you almost have kind of a concave warp here. So to address that, I can see right now it's almost like a concave table on a mouthpiece. I'm going to come even wet with my reed geek and take that off and as I do this and as the reed dries out like this it actually starts just stabilizing because it's already made a big move to warping the way it wanted to warp or if you're keeping it soaked so again I'm going right off here I'm taking that warp out and it's flat get at this point if I made any adjustment boom it's a little light a little heavy right here I might hit it with my real blade and I'm off to go in and trying this read and playing it.